Today we are, discuss, we are discussing family planning and population. I've had so many cases of children dying because of the doctor's stupidity. And I'm using that word deliberately, stupidity. A lot of people are killed in hospitals in Nigeria nowadays. The only way they can have some kind of fun is by, you know, having sex. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Amazons. Welcome to Amazons. Today on Amazons, we are talking family planning and population. Nigeria, the most populous country in Africa, with an estimated 140 million people and a population growth of 3.5%, a total fertility rate of 6.0 lifetime birth per woman. Additionally, Nigeria has a very high level rate of infant mortality. 104 infants die in every 1,000 deaths. According to the United Nations Populations Fund report, in every eight minutes, a woman dies during abortion. As usual, I have my Amazon's co-anchors, Tolakpo Bimbo. It's good to have you again on the set of Amazon's. Alarming statistics, population growth. We are talking deaths of children. We are talking deaths of women. And yet we have the power to control the births and the deaths. What do we do about this? Get active. Realize that, uh, you know, everything seems to go around. Every time we talk about a topic, we always come back to the fact that we must, as a people, change. Mm. Be more outspoken. I've had so many cases of children dying because of the doctor's stupidity. And I'm using that word deliberately, stupidity. A lot of people are killed in hospitals in Nigeria nowadays. There's no regulatory body. There's nothing. Nobody's checking anything to make sure that the people in charge of your life, because doctors are in charge of your life, are doing anything. And then, I mean, having children, of course, is a personal choice. It, it's something that you want. But it should also be determined by your pockets. You shouldn't have 12 kids if you can't afford to feed them. You're being cruel. It's wickedness. It's unnecessary. Because every child deserves to have a good life. But, Dolapo, what do you think about a family, low income, father, mother, petty workers, traders, if, you, if, I, if I may use that word, they live in one room. The one room is divided into two sections by a partition. It can either be a curtain or a board. They have three children, four five and they still go on and on living day to day is a struggle the children are out of school eating three square meals a day i'm not even talking balanced diet it's unaffordable and yet they keep having children what do you what do you think of such families one thing we have to understand here is for these people that you just described this kind of people will live in such um condition the only way they can have some kind of fun is by, you know, having sex. My question is, where do they have the sex? Well, in, in, in some, maybe they wait for the children to go to bed. Really? I, really, however it is, they do it. You understand? Because number one, they can't afford to do anything else. They can't take the kids out. The man probably can't afford to go on holiday or anything. So the only thing he does when he gets back is to try at least enjoy himself. Enjoy himself with the, you know, recreation with his wife. We'll take a break. When we come back, we still discuss family planning, population growth in Nigeria, and the health implications to the family, economic uh, implication to Nigeria as a country, and of course, the health implications to the woman who carries the brunt of pregnancy of after the break.
Welcome back to Amazons. Today we are, discuss we are discussing family planning and population. Statistically, Nigeria is estimated to be about 140 million people, an annual growth rate of 3.5%, a, a total fertility rate of 6.0 live births per woman. And we also have the highest, very high mortality, infant mortality in Nigeria. In every 1,000 1, live births, 104 infants die. And it is within our control and power to make sure that we space the children that we have, that we have the number of the children that we want to have as a family under control. We have a guest in the studio. He is a doctor. He is um, a family, a, a general practitioner, which means he also deals with women who are pregnant, which means they can advise a woman who has had one, two, three, four children and is carrying the fifth on what to do to safeguard our health and the health of the unborn child. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Benjamin Anthony Timilei to the studio. Hello, Dr. Timilei. Welcome to Amazons. Please have a seat. We heard the statistics alarming. The mother, the child, the country, as it were. As a medical practitioner, you do see pregnant women in hospital. Do you ever discuss, discuss options with them that they have within their control the number of children they can have as a family for their own safety and health and for the future of the child they are carrying and that of the ones they already have? Um, let me start by thanking Naisha for inviting me on the program. Um, hello, audience out there. Um, the topic we are discussing today is a very important one. And um, looking at um, women's health, women's health is very, very critical to us as healthcare providers. And as much as possible, when we have patients in our hospitals, we try to enlighten them, we try to educate them, and we try to let them know that they have the right to determine the number of children they have and also when they can have so those children. So how many of these women, you know, a, a, a woman, you obviously have, you have records of these women, or is it that they go from one hospital, this pregnancy, there's another one, the next one, and of course our health, health centers are not, they, they are not on the same network, unlike what you have in developed world. If I go to a hospital in Ibadan and I tell the general practitioner that I have been to this hospital somewhere in Lagos. It's just a button away. All my record will show, so there's continuity. Do these women have such uh, options available to them when they come to you with their records? Yeah, thank you very much, Hanshan, for that. Yes, we do have some of these records, and as much as possible when women come to us, if they can't come with their medical reports, we try as much as possible to know how they've been faring at wise. And, um, and that's why most doctors, they write a lot when they take history from patients. We try to know how they are doing. And from our interaction with them, we can have a picture of how they've actually been um, taking their health in terms of um, belt, in terms of um, other medical conditions. We try to take a picture of how far the women have actually fared in terms of um, their health. So as much as possible, we have a look into the past of the patient. And that's one of the, one of the major issues that we take during um, care is past medical history. We tend to look at the history in the past. And from there, we can make an assessment of how the women have been faring. I'm going to ask a question. We, 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 it seems like it's the people living below the poverty line that tend to have a lot of kids nowadays. When they come to the hospital, you do tell them about, you know, contraceptives and all that. Do they listen? Yes, thank you very much. We do. As you rightly said, the uneducated, they have high fertility rates. You can, imagine, you can imagine a woman who, who has a degree or a master's degree having five or six children. It's very rare nowadays. And then statistically, looking at the, um, the fertility rate in Nigeria, as Aisha rightly said, it's about 6.0%. And in the rural environment, this is, that is about 5.0%, while in the urban environment, it's less. 
And what that means is that education has a strong influence on the women in terms of the number of children they have and also when they have their children. You know, so as much as possible, when they come to us, we, we tend to enlighten them, especially the uneducated ones. We try, we try to tell them that, okay, you are at risk if you're having such a number of children, and also you are at an advantage if you are able to reduce the number of children you're having. And not only that, if you're able to space your children and also determine when to have your children. Because it's not only about having children. You may have two kids and you discover that the timing in between is not good enough, which may put the woman's head at risk. So as much as possible, we try to educate them, irrespective of the education status of the patient. But we still have this challenge of meeting people that are in the rural environment, mm -hmm. in the sense that healthcare facilities in the rural environment, they are not as, um, maybe as not, they, are not, they are not as many as what obtains in the urban centers. And also, healthcare providers too, they are very few in the rural setting when compared to the urban setting. So time and space, if they know that they can time, they can space, does it also mean that you are giving them the option that they can have as many as they want as long as they can time it and space it? Okay. Thank you very much, Aisha. Uh, what we do is to show the various options to them and we ensure that they make a decision in the long run. We won't tell them that it's not good to have seven children and all that, but we tell them the health implication. In the long run, they'll tell you that I wouldn't want to have seven kids. I wouldn't know if you understand what I'm saying, yeah, Aisha. I guess it my children, Because studies have actually shown that when a woman has had up to three or four kids, the tendency that that woman is going to have complications in the next pregnancy is higher. Because a lot of factors are involved in childbirth. We're talking about um, the maternal factor and also the um, infant factor. And as rightly said, infant mortality in Nigeria is one of the highest in sub-Saharan Africa. So as much as possible, we try to tell them, we throw the options open to them. In the long run, they make a decision, right, which is really very good. A few women that I've spoken to, I mean, I've had workers who, who on very, very small income per month have, I can't even mention how many children. And when you actually talk to them and everything, they have this, they, they have this opinion about this contraceptive thing. And it's a case of, I don't know, maybe it's, obviously, maybe it's down to the people who actually speak to them. They tend to tell you the, the, the side effects rather than the, what, what it actually does. If you say to a woman, oh, you can use this, you can use that, they start telling you, sorry, if I use that one, I'll get infected. If I use that one, they said it would make me fat. If I use that one, they said it would do something to my blood pressure. And they give you like 10, 15 reasons you know, why they shouldn't use it. But, you know, obviously because of the side effect, of, of course there's no drugs you know, without side effects. So I'm thinking, is it that, I mean, the, the medical um, practitioners or the people who are actually educating these people, is it that they don't take time out to actually explain things to them properly? Because most of them highlight the negative. They don't think about what is actually, what that family, what the drugs or whatever it is they're going to decide to do is going to do. They tend to just think of the negative and they go on and on about it. And for as far as they're concerned, they are justifying the reason why they wouldn't use stuff like that because they'd rather have more children than actually do th use drugs that would, you know, obviously put their life at, at risk. risk in their perception. But that, that was a very beautiful question. And it's one of the challenges we face as healthcare providers. According to the World Health Organization, about uh, 222 million women worldwide would want to have contraception but they don't have access to contraception. And uh, from the question you asked, that's one of the major challenges in um, family planning provision, mm -hmm. as far as family planning is concerned. Mm -hmm. And uh, the World Health Organization has actually looked at some of these challenges, mm -hmm. and we have classified them into the unmet needs of family planning. Mm -hmm. It's a very important topic in public health. We call it unmet needs of family planning. That's the fear of side effect, very important. Mm -hmm. You know, if I actually talk to a woman, okay, I've actually, I've had so many things about family planning, and some will tell you that uh, if, if I take family planning, it's, it's going to shoot up my blood pressure, mm -hmm. it's going to make me get obese, and uh, you know, my husband won't see a very thin lady out there, mm -hmm. and still stick with me. They are about, so these concerns are there. But the challenge I've discovered is that if a woman can be directed into a well-trained and a well-equipped family center, mm -hmm. I've discovered that they tend to come up with a decision Okay. which will not only be good to them, but will only be good to their family. In, in other countries, 
when you go, when you want to use contraception, they do a lot of tests to find out which one will, is most suited to you, which also brings down the rate of all these uh, side effects that we're talking about. Is that not done here in Nigeria? I, actually, it isn't done um, here in Nigeria. Um, it's actually done here in Nigeria. No, it is. I, I'll tell you why. I've okay. had cases. I've spoken to a lot of friends. Uh, I have people who have gone on birth control. One of them had varicose veins start coming out all over her body. One of them, uh, uh, her, the shape of her breast changed. It became flat. One of them, all sorts of things have happened to them. And this is because they didn't do proper testing. You, you, you are very right. We still have such cases in Nigeria. But as I said earlier on, if you want to have something like that, make sure you go to a very good facilities where there are well-trained personnel and also where the facilities are there. Because when a woman is coming in for family planning, having explained everything to them, we take their vital signs, we look at their blood pressure. For instance, if you are meeting a woman for the very first time and the blood pressure is on the high side, you know you can introduce some family planning to them. You know, as I rightly said, those are the common side effects, varicose veins, and um, some will have hypertension, some will have um, a swelling in the legs, edema, and a host of other complications. But as much as possible, we try to look at them, take their history in the past, know some of their medical conditions. Mm -hmm. so there are some that are diabetic, and there are some that are having this um, um, medical condition called deep venous thrombosis mm -hmm. that could predispose them to pulmonary embolism, mm -hmm. and all that. So we, from our interaction with them in the long run, we tend to know that this particular family planning will be suitable for this woman in order to prevent the sequelae. Because it's not only about giving family planning. It's of, it's of no use giving a woman family planning and the woman you know, dies after some few years. You have not achieved something. Because health is trying as much as possible to prolong the life of the patient and ensure that the patient has the best health care provider as much as possible. Okay, for uh, down that we are talking about the fi side effects could also be uh, a hindrance to any woman or a put off to any woman that actually wants to get help in spacing, planning her, you know, her family. Uh, take the case of this vaccination in the northern part of Nigeria and the effect it had. I mean, it would be very difficult for anybody to go back and talk about the positive of vaccination to these women because they've seen with their own eyes the negative effects and the damaging effect they had on their children. For women who can investigate, they can make informed choices. But for those women who are in the rural areas, the below the poverty women, what is the safest, the ones that have no side effect that we can preach to them that is available, affordable, and sometimes free that we can actually tell them? This is simple. You can space your children, you can control the number of children you have and where they can get it. Do you have such talks with this, uh, you know, with these women without the complication of the other more complicated methods? Thank you very much, Aisha. Uh, that, that was a very brilliant question. And um, it's still under the homogeneous of family um, planning. And um, looking at women in the um, rural environment, you know, illiteracy level in the rural environment is on the high side. And then, um, you know, we're talking about um, um, the, um, the financial status of women there on the low side too. As much as possible, there are a lot of them, a lot of those family planning methods, and I, I will be talking about family planning methods um, anywhere from now, that are suitable for some of these women. But what we don't normally do as a care provider is that a woman doesn't just walk into my office and then, um, me looking at the woman and also me taking some history from the woman. And I said, okay, this woman is poor, she's not so educated, let me introduce this to her. I'm going to present everything, all the various family planning methods to the woman. I'm going to explain the pros and cons. This is the side effect if you take this, and also this is the side effect. And um, one thing about some of these um, family planning methods is that a lot of them are very cheap. But some of these women don't know that they are indeed sheep. In fact, are you talking about um, male and female condom? In fact, there are some family planning centers that they provide some of these family planning kits free of charge. But our women don't patronize this because they are not aware that some of these kits are free of charge and also some of these are very sheep. So if they are not aware, what is the other option available to them? You, you know, have you taken the message to the market? Have you taken it to the motor parks? This is where you find men who procreate for recreation. And the best place you can find them is to go to their natural habitats and take the message to them. 
if we actually are serious about population control and controlling maternal and uh, infant deaths in this country. We'll take a break when we come back. We shall demonstrate to you and actually show you the options that are available to women and indeed to the family to make informed choices about family planning after the break. Welcome back to Amazon's where we are discussing family planning population, maternal and infant deaths in Nigeria. Uh, we have Dr. Timileni with us in the studio. He is a general practitioner who deals in also in family planning. Dr. Timileni, we were talking about the options available to women to control space and indeed have control over how many children they want to have as a family. The options you will tell us are the pill, condoms, both for male and female. Now we have the various options here the side effects of each of them and the positive of each of them. So the women out there and the family can make the right choice that is available to them. Thank you very much, Aisha. Um, for academics, family planning methods are actually divided into the traditional method and the modern method. And then we're talking about the traditional method. We're talking about the coitus withdrawal. That is when a man is having sex with his wife and it's about ejaculating quickly withdraws his penis from the um, genital tract so that the semen doesn't go into the female reproductive organ. And uh, the second one is wh when you um, examine your wife and know the fertility period, you don't meet your wife at that particular time. And uh, sometimes you could check the temperature, sometimes you could look at the um, texture of the cervical mucus. And by doing that, you can as well know when your woman is fertile. But as I said earlier on, it's a traditional method. We don't use that nowadays. And the one we use, we call them the modern methods, and you have some of them here. Okay, looking at the um, modern methods, some of they are divided into the barrier method and also the uh, chemical methods too. And um, we are having a lot of them here. To start with, I'll be starting with the barrier method. The barrier method um, has to do with a m mechanism through which we prevent the f male, um, the, the main semen. semen from meeting the egg. Okay. So you are putting a barrier in between. And the commonest um, barrier method is the use of condom. And condoms come in two forms. We have the male condom and also the female condom. So Aisha has been able to provide some here. We're having here the male condom is made up of latex. As you can see, is to be worn when the man is having erection. The use of um, condom has a lot of advantages apart from being a very good family planning method is equally useful in the control of uh, sexually transmitted infections like um, HIV, you know, talking about um, gonorrhea and so many other sexually transmitted infections. And I, I want us to understand something that Nigeria has the highest um, incidence of um, HIV in Sub-Saharan Africa. It if has I, the highest? Highest in Sub-Saharan Africa. In fact, the prevalence in Nigeria as at now is about 3.6%. So mere using condom can well prevent the transmission of human immunodeficiency virus and the acquisition of AIDS. <laughs> okay, doctor, let's, let's hold it there. I just got an information that w I, I am not aware of, that in sub-Saharan Africa, Nigeria has the highest rate of HIV, and which means with the protection of those who are promiscuous, who do not have one partner, that you have more than one partner, that the condom actually can prevent HIV, and that the use of condom can also prevent you from getting pregnant. It is about 99.9%, .9%, which means it's 0%. 0%. 0% could as well translate to there is full proof that it will not happen. As long as it stays on, and as long as it's the right size. How do you know the right size, and what can be done by the woman because sometimes they do, the, what pulls them off is perhaps they do not even know how to put it on. Exactly. So what do we do? D is that demonstration? What is it that you do to the rural woman or the rural man to make this choice of having a condom that, that can sometimes be free? Okay. Thank you very much, Aisha, for that very beautiful question. This is what we do in family planning clinic. As much as possible, we tend to bring the two couples together, the husband and the wife. 
And in fact, that's what family uh, plan is all about from the definition. It's just a means through which we prevent or we space children by voluntary agreement between the husband and the wife. So we bring them together and we tell them this is one. And as much as possible, we, we do advise that the uh, condom should be gotten from the right source. Because it's, if it's gotten from the wrong source, you don't know whether it's already perforated. In other words, which might allow the cement to actually seep out of the condom into the female tract. And also to ensure that it's the, the right size. Looking at it, see, male, uh, in, in terms of the size, the male um, sexual organ. organ, the penis, is designed in such a way that it can take different sizes depending of, on the level of um, stimulation. Okay, both in yeah. length and in width. In width. So as much as possible, we advise that the condom should be worn when there is full erection. It shouldn't be worn when there is no erection. If, 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 you, if you wear it before erection, something might fall off and you discover that the semen goes into the female um, genital tract. So as much as possible, we do advise that as soon as there is erection during foreplay, the condom should be worn. But that's the challenge with um, the use of condom. Because you get to know that the moment there is um, um, sexual stimulation, you, you know, want to take the, the action. The man just forgets this and you know, the uh, action takes place there about. But the, the other challenge we normally have with um, condom is the fact that some women complain that it interrupts sexual intercourse. And the enjoyment is not... Is there. it the women or the men? Yeah, okay, well, we, we, we often yeah, get that from, we often get that from both. Yeah. <laughs> we often get that. It's the men, right, audience? <laughs> No, it's the, it's, it's, it's the men that will tell you it's not the same. It's if men. <laughs> <laughs> but in fact, we get that from the women too. Well, it's, it's, I don't it's enjoy sex. I've told them, I told them they're coming to report to you. It's the men. <laughs> we often get that report but from But medically, women. medically, it, does it, does it uh, take away the fun? Does it take away the enjoyment? It doesn't. If it's properly worn and uh, at the right time, it doesn't interrupt sex. But doesn't it take away from the sensitivity of the man? It doesn't. It doesn't reduce the libido at all. Mm. Another, okay. So that is for the male That's condom. For the male. This is the female condom. The difference between the male and the female condom is that this one is longer and it's wider. I remember the woman that taught me when I was in med school. She told me that anytime she was about having sex with her husband, her husband does the insertion. So as to increase the or to promote the romance. Why is so it so <laughs> ugly? No. Yes, it is. Because it's actually designed to be able to accommodate the genital tract how of the do, woman. How do you insert this into a woman? Thank you very much. For the man, it is full erection. For the woman, what do you take into consideration before or during or after wearing this? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, during um, sex, uh, bef we, we do advocate that it should be worn before sex. Right, but the woman, what the woman just needs to do is for her to lie down in a sexual position. We call it lithotomy position. The woman lies on her back and raises the two legs, and then the man comes and inserts this. This has two rings, and th that's one of the major differences between the male uh, condom and the female condom. This is a ring. This one is at the outside. We call it the intruders. Why this one is deep within, very close to the cervix. So what is really done is that when the woman lies down in that position, the, um, the vaginal is wide and it's open. It gives room for this to be able to go into the, um, the female genital tract. So the husband tries as much as possible to put this into the vagina and ensures that it goes in to the lip of the cervix. The cervix is just an entrance between the vagina and also the womb. Remember that um, fertilization, that is the meeting together of the um, semen and the um, egg of the woman takes place in the womb. So this goes into the lip of the cervix, that is the entrance, and this one comes outside this way. There about. So the, the, man, the man's penis goes into this. Mm -hmm. And if there is a release in the long run, it does seem leak out of air into the female genital tract in the process preventing conception. I, I still need to understand how this gets into that womb. 
you know is it uh, the woman wears it like a glove or you know insert fingers and then pushes it in or how uh, I, I need to get that clear thank you very much Aisha is best worn by the husband mm -hmm. the woman lies down and then as soon as the woman lies down the husband tries to put this into the lips of the vagina the vagina is constructed in such a way the vagina looks like a, a bucket quite right it, it looks like a bucket in such a way that there is an entrance and also if you put your hand you can have enough space down there what we just need to do is that the man tries as much as possible to part the vagina as soon as the vagina is parted he pushes this down until there is a resistance there as soon as that resistance is there that's talking about the cervix so this ring stays there why this one comes out of the vagina okay so after doing all this you think the urge will still be there for the man that's the challenge we've always been having the urge is usually there but sometimes the the man complains that uh, the rubber makes noise and you know the rubber irritates me <laughs> you know it's not as free as when i go in without this there about and that's one of the major challenges we have with no, the, because the, the, the procedure with the female condom is that it's not as easy and exactly, straightforward exactly. as the male exactly I so i see right. why a lot of women would don't not like you don't, don't you like are very it. right it's, 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 you are very right there's too much complication and right. a bar between for right. what you want to do and the process exactly. what you have to do before you do what you want to do exactly yeah okay so and then the easiest one yes uh, the the other methods um apart from the male and female condom under the barrier method there is one thing we call them iud intrauterine device and um, is, this one can come in different formulations one thing about the intrauterine device is that when a woman has been found not to be having any infection because it's one of the contraindications to the use of the iud intrauterine device what we normally do is we try to put something like a barrier or something like a string some can come in form of a T. We call it copper T. We try as much as possible to put it into the womb. When we put it into the womb, what it does is to ensure that the egg and the um, semen, when they must have met together to form what is called an oven, does not stay within the womb. Because the moment an oven, that is the meeting point between the uh, semen and the egg, um, the moment they come together to form an oven and it's implanted, pregnancy takes place. And we don't want that. So what we normally do is to put that um, T-shaped um, device, or some can come in form of a loop, so to speak. We put it in the womb. As soon as it's in the womb, the moment the egg is coming, it doesn't find a place to stay. Therefore, it dies off. And um, pregnancy is stored in the process. The chemical metals, we have the pills. The oral contraceptive pills, you know, so many ladies are aware of this, you know. Um, the morning after pills, and all, some of them come as estrogen, or, and some of them come as, as progestogen only. Why some of them come as combined contraceptive, both estrogen and progestogen? What, do, what um, these um, pills do is that they tend to prevent um, um, conception by stopping the release of the egg from the women um, ovary. Okay. As soon as the egg is not released, no be. amount of semen can actually bring about a baby in a woman's womb. Okay. So and we're, having is, we're having some of them here. This is postinol. Postinol uh, is a progestogen um, contraception, which can as well be used as an emergency contraception. There's something we call an emergency contraception. If, for instance, a woman just having sexual intercourse on plant, you know, it happens there about and the woman, oh, oh i'm in trouble i'm in trouble what can i do what can i do so the, she goes for an emergency contraception and this one can as, as well prevent contraception or sorry she can as well prevent conception for a period of about two to three days after sexual intercourse. intercourse and this one it can as well be used for ladies who get raped you know rape is common in the society about and um, because of that it's not usually advisable to let a woman carry the baby that she does not, especially from an unknown father. So we give emergency contraception in that uh, regard. And um, there are a lot of advantages in the sense that um, these chemical metals, they have a um, success rate of 90, 99%. Okay, doctor, please come have because I did read something online okay. about Postino and the fact that it is actually harmful to the person taking it you can't take more than once a month or once in two months or three months it's not something that you're supposed to use on a regular 
Yes. Thank you very much. You are very right. You know, as I said earlier, this contraception, they are hormones. And we're talking about hormones. Hormones are chemical substances in the body that tend to regulate body metabolism. They control how you, your heart functions, you control your size, you control your blood pressure, mm -hmm. so many things in the body. And mm -hmm. some of these um, contraception they contain steroids. Mm -hmm. Steroids are very, very harmful in high quantity. Mm -hmm. They can make a woman to be obese. They can make a woman to retain water in her legs mm -hmm. called edema. You know, they can make the blood pressure to and rise. The heart, so. the heart can be overworking. The woman can even have stroke if it's taken excessively. So we are very right. It's usually done under the guidance of an healthcare provider. So in all of this that you have, all the, all, all the uh, methods that you've mentioned, the traditional one, the withdrawal, uh, the one that you plan, you know, when the woman's menstrual cycle is, it, 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 you have to know when she's not ovulating. And then, of course, uh, the condoms. I see that everything you have here, only the, uh, the, 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 um, the traditional method and the condom is actually the one that the man takes. The other ones are for the woman. I, ha I have, uh, you know, I, 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 I used to practice uh, the, 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 one, the tea, the okay. tea method. That this, the side effect it gave to me was that it gave me serious stomach cramps. 48 hours after, I had to go back to the hospital and say, look, what, I, I need to take this off. You know, it's, it's not working for me. You know, those are the, uh, the, 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 the negative of the state function. That does not mean that it will not work for another exactly. woman, but it didn't exactly. work for me. And I was not tested. I wasn't, I, I didn't give any medical record oh. before I was given, oh. before that was, oh. you know, oh. inserted oh. into oh. me. Oh. So oh. these days there are, you have education, uh, you present, you mm. prevent the various options and the woman makes the decision or the husband and wife make the decision, you know, as, as a family. Uh, Dolapo, do you have any questions? Yes, yes, I do actually. Um, from everything that you've said that you, you, you've displayed the male condom, the female condom, and the other ones that you've spoken about. But I believe that there are other methods that you haven't mentioned. The reason I say that is because I have, a, I have an implant in my arm. You know, and for me, you know, it's, it's the easiest thing that you can do because I don't feel, it hasn't made me fast. I don't feel bloated. I don't feel anyhow. In fact, it's been fantastic. And I'm thinking that with all the complication and the complaints about the condom not making people feel, the men don't like the condom. I'll tell you, the female condom is just too much of a headache. I can't even, th I can't figure it out. You know, and then obviously the side effects of the pills. I'm just thinking that maybe if, all these other ones that you haven't mentioned are made available to these women, things that they can just do and go. Because the one I've got is three, is three years. It doesn't do anything. It's just a nip, you know. You know what it is. They slip it in, and that's it. And it's in my arm, and I don't feel anything. Maybe if you give women more options and everything, maybe you actually get them to actually go for it because the female condom, I, I just couldn't fathom it. Honestly, no, thank you. That, that, was a that was a very beautiful question. You know, there are other methods apart from the method that we are displaying here, quite right. And uh, like the one she just there's something we call implant, and it comes as an implant on. Is an hormone containing contraception, just like a stick or yeah. a broom, it's, yeah. just like a broom. What you just do is to make a little incision under a sterile procedure and put it. As soon as it's there, it mm -hmm. can prevent pregnancy for three to five years. Yes. You won't feel it. You just go about your daily activities, you don't know that anything is okay. inside of you, and it doesn't get you bloated up. At all. You, you just, you're just fine. There are other methods, and uh, the, the other methods that I have not actually talked about, they are the permanent method, because there's something we call the, um, the uh, temporary method, and also the permanent method. Those are and the vasectomy. The vasectomy for males, too. You know, you just, just a little surgery, you, 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 you just remove a component of the male um, sexual organ. And also for the uh, women, too, there's uh, something we call tuba ligation. We just um, ligate the tubes. Af Africans don't do that. <laughs> don't an African man <laughs> will not tie it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, an, and an African woman does not want, because you never know. They say you never you know, know what exactly. happens. I don't think that's in our culture at all. At all. We're very... <laughs> we're, we're a, mo a modern, modern African man can, can, you can, can imagine, that, that choice, you imagine you know. a man who lost his three kids in a plane crash. Exactly. You know? exactly. Yeah. Imagine yeah. if he had tied his yeah. tube. I mean... Okay. Well, I, I have to ask a question. I remember, someone that had a baby. Let's go for a break. When we come back, we shall continue with this discussion. We are talking family planning and the methods and options available to us as a nation to space or control the number of children that we have after the break.
Welcome back to Amazons, where we are discussing family planning, the options available to each family to take control of spacing or deciding not to have any more kids. Bimbo, yes, you were going to ask a question. I was asking the doctor because I, 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 there's no foolproof to any of these contraceptives. That's the way I feel. Because I know a friend of mine, um, she's an older friend. She got to 45 and decided she wanted no more kids. She had the IUD put inside her. The baby came holding it in his hand. He, when he was born, he had it in his hand. It's not a, uh, you know, a folklore. It actually happened. And then also I have a friend who did have a, the, what's that thing called? Is it a diaphragm? One of those things that you insert, like the ring. Okay. That should be diaphragm. The diaphragm. And it's shifted to such a bad place that they can't remove it. They say it will be actually more painful to remove it and damage our health. So it's been left there. Yep. So, so, thank, so, so. You. thank you very much. We, we have some of this on toward the um, effect of contraception. And, and as you rightly said, one of the um, major um, complications of um, IUD is sometimes you discover that it's lost in the womb. You can't just find it thereabout. And um, the other one too, we do have such cases as much as possible. And also there are failures with the use of these contraceptions too. And that's why when we're talking about the uh, fee of this contraception, we do put percentages. Some could be 90, some could be 99 percent. Take for instance, implant on the implant, the um, efficacy is more than 99 percent. But the same that there's still room for failure. Dolako, yeah, I, I want you to say something about you know the various methods and what it means to the socio-economic um, state of Nigeria. I believe that if I walk into any medical center or hospital, I should be able to find condoms on the table. That's what happens in international country. You don't need to speak to anyone. Exactly. It's there, you stroll in, exactly. you take it, you stroll out. And if we can do that, I think we'll be able to, you know, sort of like help, you know, controlling all this breeding, I call it. Bimbo. What I have to say to people out there is that, you know, the children don't ask to be born, but they do deserve the best in life. If you've heard stories about contraceptives and how difficult it is to use them and the side effects, use a condom. Use a condom. Protect the interest of your children. Give them the best life you possibly can. You owe it to them. The viewers at home have also been following this discussion. We've had um, a few comments on our Facebook the Amazons um, slash for the Facebook slash forward the Amazons family planning according to Fatu Du Elizabeth family planning helps one to manage the resources one have need we know the consequences of not doing that in our nation today we have so many comments that we do not have time to read out here today my own advice will be procreation is ordered by God we also have the responsibility to give the best care to the children that we bring to this world. And one of the ways we can do that is to bring the number of children that we can care for to the world. You have the method, you have the option to know the number of children you want to have as a family. If you do not know, ask questions. And I think we also have the responsibility, Dr. Timilain, to take the message to our motor parks, take it to the market, where you have the uninformed, the real Nigerians who need to know the positive and the advantages of having a fewer number as a family. Until we come your way again, I'm Aisha Falude. Have a very good evening. Bye-bye. Thank you, Doctor.